All right, so knew a lot of measurements, learned how to read instruments. Now we have to talk about the digits of the measurement. We're going to talk about something called significant figures. This is a potentially difficult concept in chemistry. It's new. It deals with math. It's not that the math is hard. It's just that this is a weird way of looking at numbers, and it's going to be unusual for you, and that's okay. But it's how we do things in science. In science, most of the numbers that we use are measurements, and we already know that measurements are uncertain. There's that last digit, the one that you estimate. Well, that uncertain digit is important, but it affects what we do with the numbers. So to start with, the definition of significant figures. All of the digits in a measurement that are certain, in other words, you know because there are lines, plus that one last digit, the uncertain digit, all of those are significant figures. There are rules. Now these are nice in that you don't actually have to understand why the rules are the way they are. You just have to be able to apply them. You have to learn the rules and apply them. So there are six rules. We're going to look at the first five because the first five deal with almost every measurement we're going to be working with. The sixth one is for rare cases and we'll talk about that in a second. So the first rule of significant figures is easy. Anything that's not a zero. All non-zero digits in a measurement are significant. They're important. They're part of the measurement. Easy enough. Rule number two. If you have a zero that comes between non-zero digits, any number of zeros that are in between non-zero digits, those are significant as well. They're part of the measurement. So now we have to get into what happens if the zeros aren't in between non-zero digits. What if they're at the end or at the beginning of the number? What do we do about them? So here are the rules. If you have a zero in front of a number, it's the first part of the number is a zero. It's leading zeros. They're never significant. They do nothing but hold the place of the decimal point. And if all they're doing is holding the place of the decimal point, they're not part of the measurement. They're part of how you tell how big the measurement is. If they're at the end of the number, then it depends on where they are in relation to the decimal point. So if they're at the end of the number and after the decimal point to the right, then they're always significant because they speak to the accuracy of the instrument that you're using. If they're at the end of the number but they're before the decimal point, the left of the decimal point, then they're not significant. Now there is a little star by this rule because there are some exceptions to this one that we might encounter and we'll talk about those as they come up. Okay, So let's do some examples of counting the number of significant figures. Right? Here are some examples of some measurements that we've taken in lab. There are several of them. They're all different kinds of measurements, but they're all measurements. They all have a unit with them, which makes them measurements, and we know that there's some, some uncertainty there. What I want you to do is stop the video and take a few minutes, jot down each of these numbers, and count, just count, according to the rules we've just learned, how many significant figures there are in each of these measurements. Stop the video and tell me how many of in each of these measurements, how many sig figs are there. I'll wait. I said stop the video. Are you ready? All right, so let's take a look at what you've got as your answers, and we'll see if they're right or not. So A, 1.254 grams. Rule number one says all non-zero digits are significant. So that means that there should be four. All four of those sig figs. All four of those all four of those digits are significant. What about the next one? 2.0075. Well, I know according to rule one that the two, the seven, and the five, they're significant. But what about the zeros? Well, where are they? They're between non-zero digits. So they're also significant. That means that there are five in that number. What about C? 3.450000 millimeters. Well, we know the 3, the 4, the 5, those are all significant because rule 1 says any non-zero digit is significant. What about those zeros, though, after? They're not in between non-zero digits, so I can't use rule 2. Where are they? Well, they're at the end of the number. Where are they in relation to the decimal point? They're after the decimal point. They're at the end of the number and to the right of the decimal point, according to rule 4, they are always significant. So all six of those digits are sig figs. Sig figs is how we abbreviate significant figures. Let's look at the next one. 0.000230 liters. 
All right. Well, I know the 2, the 3, and the 2. Those are significant. What about the zeros in front? Well, rule 3 says zeros in front of a number are never significant. So they don't count. So I can just ignore those. They're just placeholders. The 2, the 3, and the 2 are. What about the 0 at the end of that number? Is that significant or not? Well, it's at the end of the number. And it is to the right of the decimal point. So it must be significant. So that means that that measurement has 4. What about the next one? E, 47,000 milligrams. Well, I know the 4 and the 7 are significant. But what about those zeros? Where are they? They're at the end of the number. Which side of the decimal point? Well, they're on the left of the decimal point. So according to that last rule, rule 5, those shouldn't be significant. And that means that only the 4 and the 7 are. And finally, we have this weird number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's a very important number in chemistry. It's called Avogadro's number. We're going to look at that one much, closer, much more closely later on. But how many significant figures does it have? Well, this is a number in scientific notation. And when we have a number in scientific notation, we can ignore the exponent, the power of 10. That's not part of it, because all that is is a placeholder. So really, all I need to worry about is the 6.02. The 6 and the 2 are definitely significant because of rule 1. And that 0 in between them is also significant. So this has 3. How'd you do? Did you get them all? If not, we're going to be working on this. You can definitely ask questions in class. Now, rule 6, I told you there were 6 rules. Rule 6 only occurs at certain times. And one of the times that we, we see rule 6 is that when we count anything, for example, if we were to count up crackers, right? If we count them, we are assuming that our count, we count items, that that's infinitely certain. And so there's no uncertainty when we count, unless you can't count. And if you can't count, you maybe shouldn't be in this class. But assuming you can count, when you count something, you're 100% certain or 0% uncertain. And since you're very, very certain, we consider the counting numbers to have an infinite number of significant figures. Now, you might think to yourself, why the heck are we counting the number of significant figures in a measurement? Well, who cares? All I have to do is write down the measurement. Well, it matters because what do we do with these measurements usually? We do math. And in math class, you just do math, and you plug numbers into your calculator. And whatever the calculator spits out, that's the answer, and there, and there you go. But that's because in math, you're not really dealing with measurements. Measurements have uncertainty. Uncertainty carries through your math. And it makes your answer even more uncertain. So we have to take that into account. Now again, it doesn't matter how these rules work. What matters is that you learn the rules and can apply them. And there's only two for using significant figures in calculations. The first rule has to do with addition and subtraction. When you add or subtract any numbers, your answer has to have the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the fewest number of decimal places in the calculation. So you're going to do some addition and subtraction of numbers. You're going to look at each of the numbers that you're adding and subtracting. You're going to see which one has the fewest number of decimal places, places after the decimal point. And you're going to round your answer to have that number of decimal places. Simple. You don't have to know why you're doing it. You just have to do it. For multiplication and division, it's a little different. In multiplication and division, your answer has to have the same number of significant figures as the measurement that has the least number of significant figures in the calculation. So again, you're doing multiplication or division. You look at each of the measurements that you're multiplying and dividing. You count the number of significant figures in each of those measurements. Whichever one has the least number, that's the number of significant figures that you round your answer to. It'll help if we do a couple of examples. So here we have a piece of copper wire. Our copper wire is 14.5 centimeters long. And we're going to cut a piece 7.38 centimeters from that wire. What's left? Well, this is not a difficult math problem. 14.5 minus 7.38 is the answer. And when you plug that into the calculator, you get 7.12 centimeters. But here's the problem. The 5 in 14.5 is uncertain. Somebody estimated that, which means it might not really be a 5. And if it's not really a 5, then that changes the 1 in the 7.12 to something else. So we're only allowed to have one uncertain digit in our measurement. 
So when I subtract those two, 14.5 minus 7.38, even though the calculator says 7.12, I can't really be certain about that one. And since I'm only allowed one uncertain digit, I have to drop the two. Now I drop the two, and the two is not big enough to change the one to anything else, so I leave it as 7.1. Well, what's the rule? When subtracting or adding, my answer has to have the least number of decimal places. So look at the two numbers that I subtracted. 14.5 has one decimal place. 7.38 has two decimal places. One decimal place is less, so my answer will have one decimal place. And I just round it to one decimal place. And I'm right. I don't even have to know why I'm doing it. What about multiplication and division? Here's one, density. We already know how to calculate density. It's mass over volume. So we're going to calculate the density of a piece of lead. The mass of the lead is 25.00 grams. That was measured on a centigram balance. And the volume is 2.21 cubic centimeters. So how do we calculate density? Density is mass divided by volume. So density is 25.00 grams divided by 2.21 cubic centimeters. And if we plug that into our calculator, it spits out 11.3122171919 cubic centimeters. That number has way too many decimal places. Even if you didn't know anything about significant figures, you would look at that number and go, I should probably round that. There's too many, significant, there's too many decimal places. I can't be that certain. Well, think about it. The 25.00 grams, that last zero, that's uncertain. And the 2.21 cubic centimeters, that one, that's uncertain. It carries a lot of uncertainty. It means our answer can't be that certain. We have to round it. So what do we do? The rule is, when I'm multiplying or dividing, my answer has to have the same number of total sig figs, significant figures, as the number, the measurement, with the smallest number of significant figures in the problem. 25.00 we count the number of significant figures has four. The two, the five, and then the two zeros are after the decimal point, so they're significant. That's got four. 2.21 cubic centimeters, that only has three. So I have to round my answer to have three significant figures. I take the first three I encounter. One, one, and then the three. And I drop everything else. And I get 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. That's my answer with the correct number of significant figures. This takes practice. You will have to get used to counting sig figs, and you'll have to get used to using these two rules. But you'll have plenty of practice. Any time you do a calculation in this class, you must have your answer have the right number of significant figures according to these rules. We'll practice it. You'll get it right.